This week I had a great conversation with the comedian Bonnie Davies. Now, you may not know Bonnie, but you may well be more aware of her alter ego, the comedic character that she plays, famous Sharon, who is famous for absolutely nothing at all. In this conversation, you get a really great insight into the amount of work and the process that goes on behind being a comedian and developing a character like famous Sharon. We hear about the history and the development of this character and what Bonnie's been through to take her to where she is today. Now, famous Sharon doesn't actually appear in this conversation, which is maybe disappointing to some of her fans, but her theme of celebrate yourself really shines through and it's really interesting to hear how Bonnie's taken that on herself. This is a great conversation, a lot of fun and super, super interesting from a behind the scenes point of view. So enjoy Bonnie. Hello and welcome back to WA Real. I'm your host, Bryn Edwards. Today I have the great pleasure of welcoming Bonnie Davies. Bonnie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you Thank for, having, you for me. having me here at your place. Yeah, no worries. It's like Indeed. you're having me and I'm having you here. <laughs> There's a lot of people exchange. having each other. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. So, um, you're a comedian. Yes. Famous Sharon. Yes. And... Two R's, one of them silent. Two R's, one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I thought it would be fun to... I haven't had a comedian on the show. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's good. I can set the bar. You can set the bar <laughs> yeah. at, at somewhere. Yeah. Well, I just thought, um, among many things, that it would be really fun to talk about being a comedian and sense of humour at a time that is quite serious. Mm. And, you know, also, to, to use the phrase when you asked me... this. Today, when I walked in and said, how are you, Bryn? And I said, emotionally dense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I thought it'd be fun to do that. But let, let's, let's set the scene to start with. Yeah. Famous Sharon. Tell, for anybody who's not met, encountered her. Well, she's not as famous as she thinks she is. So there's probably quite there a few go. people that have not heard of her. Um, but thank you for knowing who she is now, because she's just got a little bit more famous. Um, she's very famous for nothing at all. That's her shtick. Right. So she's, um, I realise she's actually a bit of a zeitgeist of the era. Because yes. Because having no talent whatsoever and using the internet to be famous or just being famous for sex tapes or scandals or, yeah. no, or you know, family connections is very in vogue. So. It is. Very, very much so. Yeah. So that's her premise. So how did this come about? Uh, it was an accident. <laughs> I was doing comedy as me, which was also an accident. I used to be right. a festival producer and a, a arts. I used to work in the arts as a producer. And I went to London and I started seeing comedy. And so when I came back to Perth, I went to see comedy. I'd never had time when I was in Perth. You know how you always mean to yeah, yeah. get to things? But in London, I discovered I really loved live comedy. There's just something about being in that room and just the cracking of people laughing and that you cannot, even comedy on TV isn't the same for me. That feels a bit like homework. Yes. Seeing it live is really where I'm, I'm on fire. I love that stuff. Um, and so I came back to WA and then met all the WA comedians and then started trying to produce them and then they made a bet with me to do comedy, which I thought was funny because I'd done rapping and all sorts of things just for yeah. fun. You know, it's good to challenge yourself. Um, but I got hooked. I've never felt... I'm really confident in front of people. I've done a lot of public speaking, but comedy, yeah. comedy, I just had never felt that rush or that high. And um, and when you fail, you really feel your soul gets ripped through your feet. Do you know, it's like a it's a visceral <laughs> connection with people. Yeah, it's kind of very personal and very um, trivial at the same time. It's this weird mix. Anyway, yeah. um, so I did comedy for a couple of years as me, and I got selected for some showcases in Melbourne, and I had like some success, I won some awards, yep. but no one really cared. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I decided to stay in Perth, not move to Melbourne or Sydney. Yeah. Um, because I just felt like everyone moved, especially then. This is about 12, 13 years ago. Yeah. Um, really the conversations at parties were, when are you moving? You know, you didn't stay. Yes. And um, I decided to stay because I thought, what if... That's really interesting. What if we did? Like, what if we all stayed and built it here? Mm. And also I could see the internet and things were happening. You can be funny anywhere. So yeah. if I can be undeniably funny and and build something, then that can work anywhere. Yeah. Um, anyway, 
because I was the only one left, I got asked to host a big Hollywood gala uh, kind of style event. It was a burlesque show, actually. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty, I mean, I dress a lot nicer now, but back then I was like even more low key. So just, you know, cut off jean shorts and T-shirts and like I was very casual. And I asked the producer if they wanted me to maybe do a character because it's, you know, giant martini glasses and Marilyn Monroe impersonators and this big, fabulous show. And then you've yeah. got me going, hey, guys, I'm the only one left. You want to see some, <laughs> woo, <Yeah. laughs> an event. Um, and the producer said, oh, I didn't know you did characters. And I was like, I don't, but let's go. I do know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all right. And I did that classic thing of booking it three months out and then just forgetting about it. And I really wasn't very good at managing myself or my life or my commitments at all. I would just take on too much and then just try and mm. eat it all. And um, so like two days before the event, when I had planned to, you know, have costumes, write a whole lot of jokes, I was scrambling around the house, borrowing my friends' outfits. And anyway, I went on stage with two jokes and a whole bunch of outfits that I just scrounged together. <laughs> and, um, and it was like the audience loved it more than they've ever loved anything else before. Yeah. So I didn't really know she was a thing. It's funny to uh, someone reminded me of that moment, that six months where I didn't really know if she was something. Yeah. Um, but I then went to Edinburgh and um, completely burnt myself out. I was doing a show that other people told me I should do because it had won an award, but it wasn't really what I wanted to be doing. Mm. Uh, and I lost about 12 or 14 grand and I ended up in emergency and I had to cancel shows. And oy, oy. I just remember thinking, if this is success, <laughs> then I don't want it. Yeah. Like, this oh, is not, is. <laughs> like, do you know, this is not success. This yeah. is absolutely not. Um, but this is, you know, people going, look, us, look, you know, keep going. This is it. You've got to grind through and push yourself and put yourself out there. And, you know, you learn from failure. And I was like, well, I've learned from failure. that This is not how I want to live my life. Mm. Um, and so when I came back, I didn't do any comedy as myself for a couple of months, but I just gave Famous Sharon all my gigs. And at that point, she was... Were you in, doing Famous Sharon in Edinburgh? No, no, I was just no, doing was me just, in Edinburgh. Yeah. But um, I bought a wig and I bought some stuff from this fabulous up shop in... I was like, I just... It was such a success. I did, a, I did her in July, just before I went to Edinburgh. Yes. And I just kept thinking about how much the audience loved her. Like they yeah. were yelling her name the whole time. And they kind of got in on the joke really quickly. At one point, yeah. she um, improvised, oh, you know, Darren, my husband, and someone yelled, Dazza! And Sharon was like, oh, my God, that's what I call him. Are you friends with him? Oh, yeah. like, <laughs> just rolling with yeah, it. Yeah, like just rolling with it. There was lots of fun banter, and, um, and that was just so beautiful. And Sharon was a talent agent at that point. So from my two, my two must-haves for the producer was that she was Australian because I was sick of seeing people go up on stage and they're amazing, but everyone is, you know, English or American or they're pretending to be French or yeah. they're pretending to be from anywhere except Morley Galleria in Perth, Western Australia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, I want to make her real suburban. Like she's proper, yeah. you know, shopping centre mama, like living that life and yeah. is going to make her dream of being a talent agent come true. Um so, yeah, when I got back from Edinburgh, I just gave her all my gigs, which is kind of funny. I like that. Yeah, she just Take took her. the first gig she did was to 4,000 teenagers at a big rock festival. <laughs> like, because I'd been working really hard and I'd gotten really good at improvising and I'd built a, you know, I was a paid, I could, I was a paid MC and mm. um, I, I was doing well enough in the industry to have professional gigs. So she just took my professional gigs. But I guess to the general public, she really just stepped into the world out of nowhere. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, what I didn't realise is people didn't realise it was me. Even my own friends and family didn't come to the first friend show because show, they did not realise it was me. There was a guy that I was working with about, it was during the first fringe, so it would have been eight months in and I had just realising that she's actually a thing. And I went and got shazzed, which is what I call it when I get into yeah, full yeah. Sharon costume. There's Bonnie, Shawnee, and Sharon. Um, Shawnee is half halfway. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what my housemates used to call me Shawnee if they were seeing me halfway. Anyway, um, I w was really on a schedule and I was still working part-time at that time, at that point, obviously, because she just started. 
and I went into the bathroom, got shazzed and came out and he just went, what the? <laughs> he thought Sharon was someone I managed. He'd seen me posting on Facebook. He sat next to me. He worked next to me during the whole of Fringe and did not realise that it was me, which just blew my mind. People do pick it up more these days as well, but um, mm. especially in the beginning, she was quite frumpy looking and, I mean, I can't believe I left the house looking like that, but that's, you know, fail fast and fail often, right? Um, yeah, so I kind of just gave her all my gigs for six months and I stepped back from comedy for a while just to, just from the stand-up circuit, do, you mm. know, doing lots of late night gigs. It's quite relentless. It's really exhausting. And at that point I was working other jobs trying to, make all the ends meet as well producing for people or doing whatever and um it was just exhausting so I was just stepping back to think about everything and just kind of let Sharon fill that gap and she was just so fun people just l got it like yeah. they were just on board so quickly than me and then um uh yeah I decided to test her at fringe and then I thought if she does well at fringe then she's a thing yeah but it was weird thinking that there was a whole six months there where I was like, I don't know, she could be this thing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. um, but it was kind of a beautiful way to let her roll out because then I just let her find her feet. Uh, you know, I thought I tried to play her really bitchy initially, but people didn't like that. Um, they especially didn't like her bitching about me as a person, which I thought was hilarious because I was like, <laughs> it's literally me bitching about me. Yes. But people were like, no, Sharon, no, don't say that about Bonnie. <laughs> This is amazing. Um, but, you know, I learnt from the audience and really she evolved with them. Yeah. Um, and then, How did you do that? What do you mean? When you say evolve with the audience. Well, I guess the thing for me that's really different for Sharon is that she's not just on stage or on film or in a show. She also roves after and before shows. Yeah. And um, I was also doing a lot of, like, I did the VIP tours for Fringe mm. that year. Yeah, so in the first Fringe season, she got on the project for 10 seconds, but we milked that for the next two years. Of course. <laughs> of course, as seen on the project. Um, she got on the project, she hosted the Fringe World Awards, hosted the VIP tours, and then also did three weeks of a show. Yeah. And um, a big part of her shtick as a talent agent, this, she was still a talent agent at this point, because mm. I was still had no idea what I had in my hands. Um she was obsessed with fame and making people famous and whatever. So she was taking selfies with people. And so you're just naturally having dialogue with people constantly. Mm. But it's interesting because I can't play her. It was a real um, tussle for me of am I just playing her nicer because it's easier or is this who she is and how can yeah. I justify that as a character? Yeah. Um, because the reality is most people who can play a really bitchy character on stage don't then have to hang out with the audience for three hours afterwards. Yes. Like that's quite a different dynamic if you're in a group. Yes. And you're being really nasty to people. Do you know? Yeah. Like it's a, it's not fun. No. Um, people don't warm to that. Really. No. <laughs> yeah. And so I think that just had to make her a little bit more real as well. Um, so there's definitely been evolutions with her where I got too real and tried to make her too normal looking. Yeah. And then and now I'm back into making her eccentric, but she's just a really hyper, hyper version of, you know, her different character traits. Mm. Yeah. So, mm. yeah, I don't know if that's a bit too esoteric. but No, 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 yeah. it does. It, it's fascinating to hear how, um, yeah, you tinker with a persona mm. to meet a certain. Yeah. Because you could, you could argue we do that. Yes, we do that in real life. We do that yeah. in real life. You get to tweak it at a higher level. And also that it's interesting too that, um, you know, like a, a few years ago I stopped asking people for selfies because it, it got to the point where people were just coming up for selfies all the time. Yeah. And I thought, well, if they want a selfie, they'll just come up and ask. Except that's not true because there's a whole segment, like a third of the population, mm. that would never ask but really secretly want one, mm. but they won't be the person to go up and ask for one. Yeah, yeah. Too and so Sharon whatever. has to give them that invitation and make them feel like, oh, okay, you know, like they're yeah. just participating. Um, yeah, but, you know, so there's been lots of learnings for me along the way where I just assumed, oh, well, you know. Mm. you know. And, like, for example, I started doing um, stand-up as her 
uh, stand-up's a great place to hone material and just really work things in. And she was coming out and being very like, oh, did you know I'm famous, Sharon, and da-da-da. And I was like, after a while, I realised the audience wasn't reacting to her the same way as they were off stage, because off stage she was like, it's me, it's famous Sharon. <laughs> like, hello. Yeah. Like, she'll walk into a room waving at everyone as though they know her already. <laughs> so yes. um, then people respond to you really differently. That's partly mm. why people don't recognise me out of character, I think. Yeah. Because I don't walk into a room waving to everyone. Like, <laughs> that is very Sharon. She's like, obviously, you can't believe I'm here. Like, this is yeah. an amazing moment for all of you. Even people who've never met her before, she's like, well, congratulations meeting me in the real life. You know, I'm off the TV. You can touch me. I'm real. Like, <laughs> you're welcome, you know. Um, so uh, I had to change how I even took her on stage is that, oh, we should just enter. It doesn't matter if no one knows who she is. She would enter. She always thinks she's more famous than she is. Yep. And so she and just that everybody assumes knows who she that is. people would know who she yeah. is. And if they don't, they do now. <laughs> like, <They> do. <laughs> solved. <laughs> like, Not an issue. Yeah. All, all, and so she's got a few like mantras as well. She's kind of an accidental genius. I've really learned a lot from her in terms of, so one of them is be the fame you want to see in the world, which is to play on be the change you want to see yep. in the world. Um, but also the world is your catwalk. So start from where you are. Yeah. Um, what have you got? Let's work with it. Pose like everyone's watching because if they're not watching, they bloody will be after if a while. Posing, yeah. <laughs> Try it at a traffic light, dove. So it works wonders. Um, and then put yourself into your selfie, which is just like, just, just be you. Do yeah. you. Do you. So it's like the aspirational be the fame you want to see, but also start where you are and... Um, and you know, putting yourself yeah. into everything is really, is really great. So you said um, stand up's a great place to test stuff. Yeah. Has it been a journey to get to a place where stand up is a, is now you can comfortably go and test stuff, and it not be like because obviously if you're testing stuff, then stuff some stuff's going to bomb. Mm. Yeah, right. absolutely. But. It must have been a bit of a journey to get to a place where now you see stand up as as like a test bed for other jokes for jokes, as opposed to what it might have been earlier on. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, well, I think like it's interesting because I don't think you ever get over that rejection yeah. from the audience. Like even the early days, I think I'm just more, and it still will sting so much if things don't work. Mm. But now I just have more things I can fall back on to make it work. I think at the beginning when yeah. I started, I didn't even have stage presence or understand yeah. my voice. Or yeah. um, I remember once... Or someone, go-to jokes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or go-to jokes that always work. Um, and sometimes, you know, when you're even when you're doing new stuff, you might, you know, you don't have that long to test new stuff. And I actually haven't tested new stuff for a couple of years on, on in a stand-up circuit. Because I've been so busy yeah. building everything else up. But um, I will be going back to it in another couple of months and just really hammer it. And I tend to just go really hard for a while. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so it's quite I methodical then. Oh, yeah. It's very strategic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it has to be more so for me because I do a lot more. I don't think there's many other WA comedians that do as many like weekend work festivals. Like I do all day things. That yeah. Will, you know, I'll fly up to Karatha and be there the whole weekend. And then also do like tourism shoot videos and, you know, awards nights and corporate stuff during the day yeah. to then put stand up every night. You, um, yeah. Would be and really, if, you, if you're going to do stand up, you need to be writing, you need to be reviewing what you're doing and then going back and practicing practice. It's like being, it's like getting ready for a boxing match, you know, you've got yeah. to be match fit. Yes. And I feel like I learn the most when I go back and take a piece of material back again and again and again and really yeah, yeah, yeah. build on it, it and hone it. And hone it, it. it tweak it, tweak Whereas it. if I kind of do boxing once a month and kind of forget about the technique, then I'm not really making the most of yeah. stage time is like money. You can have heaps of it and still have none. Yeah. You know, like have no benefit of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I like to just really be, and because my time is so precious as well and I have a lot of other things that are in the works with famous Sharon yeah um building up her fan base and her social media and just getting better and more creative and I've actually just spent the last two years just working on her character yeah because it just got to a point where she was a bit too t 2d 
Yeah. I was like, well, what's she scared of? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, what's her family dynamics like? How yeah, does, yeah, yeah. How Let's does she wake up pic- in the morning? Like, Let's what's her day pictures. like? Yeah. Because yeah. then, especially on social media and just in, in general, I think, you know, when you can see a character's vulnerability or a person's vulnerability, you connect with them more strongly. Yes. I was kind of making her a little bit too perfect. Yes. And I didn't really want to risk yeah, any we create, we, cracks. Yeah, we connect with flaws, don't we? Yeah. Absolutely. But I still was finding that hard to figure out what flaws to give her and, you know, that felt like big decisions. Mm. So I had to, I got some writers in the room and but we really broke her down and we're just mm. kind of coming out of the end of that. And this is the year of practicing Shaz now. So right. I'm just practicing her. And how would you go about, the way I would refer to it is, is pushing buttons and pushing <laughs> envelopes of people because um I, I find with comedy and correct me if i'm wrong you know part of it is going right to the edges or just a bit past where people sometimes will yeah. or won't go um whether that's acceptability or reflecting inwards as in whoa that's just like me and it's almost a little bit or, yeah, I guess what what do you mean like talking about things that people don't yeah, say or yeah. they're feeling? I mean, I guess Sharon's in a pretty safe world yeah. in terms of that stuff because usually the things she'll say are very already said by many comedians yeah. anyway. You know, like um, tensions in relationships or kids are exhausting or you know that kind of world. Yes. Uh, she doesn't really push boundaries political or yeah yeah it's she kind yeah. of pushes i think for anything it's funny how if someone says to her oh you're so oh you're so fabulous and she says i know and that's enough to crack them up yeah and it's interesting how much we do not own our own gloriousness or yes. our own like it's yes i think that's probably the area that she yeah. really pushes people um but in a way she just pushes so far past it <laughs> yeah. That then no matter how she celebrates herself so hard. <laughs> yeah. That if you celebrate well, that's yourself probably, that's a little it, bit. Then. That's what yeah. it probably meant. So yeah. if people will celebrate themselves even a bit, yeah. It's nothing in comparison to her. So they don't feel self conscious about it. Yeah. I, I love I love that part of Sharon. Like I love that I get to make people feel so good. I think people leave her shows on a high. Um, Because I was in Edinburgh uh, the second or first, I think it was the first year I was there, and I was just a little open micer, which means I was not getting paid for gigs at that point, and I um, had got like a grant to go over and just practice, Mm. because I'd had a few successes, like early successes, Um, but in Edinburgh, you can do 20 minutes on stage in a free fringe show for a month, that's more stage time than you get in a year in Perth. So, you know, if we're talking about really getting Condense. match fit, it's yeah, like yeah, a that's... boot camp of yeah. boxing, like comedy boxing. So um, I was having an amazing time and there was two conversations I really remember from that time. One was that I said to a friend of mine, I'm so lucky to be here. I just can't believe that I get to be here doing yeah. this right now. Like I was really grateful. Um And he said, luck is hard work and opportunity coming together. And mm. I was like, oh, that's really good to remember yeah. and I've always, always thought too for me I get a lot of opportunities because I'm quite privileged but there's definitely people that work really hard and just get less opportunities coming their way mm. which is that you know the gap in yeah. privilege stuff which I just always kind of try and think about in terms of how to even that out or, or why that happens anyway um, and then the other thing was I was walking along and I'd just seen these amazing shows and they were all like just so funny and every comedian hated life, was dealing with depression, was talking about some major uh, alcoholism. On, show. Yeah, every show was was, and they all hated people. Yeah. And I love people. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm generally pretty optimistic. Like I'll look for the opportunities and things. And I just remember thinking, I think I'm in the wrong industry. <laughs> and I remember walking down, like I really remember walking down the cobble streets. By myself, just thinking, 
the, you know, I don't want to be like all that. these people are the good ones. Like these is yeah. the people. These are the people top of their game, and mm. this is what they're talking about. Mm. And it's not easy to make liking people funny. <laughs> like, yeah, there's not natural humor in getting along with people, um, and and being optimistic is not naturally funny either. Do you know the conflict and the tension yeah, yeah, is yeah. where the, you can really get great humor from? And then I thought, well, if I can make that funny, then that will be my point of difference. Yeah. And that is essentially Famous Sharon. She loves people. The roving and all the stuff that I do with her, I don't have to do. do you know, like, yeah. A lot of comedians will avoid the audience after a show or they'll go in and there's people that will go out and do photos, but they don't want to hang out with them and go to parties with them for no. like hours. I do that because I know, like, because I want to, it just yeah. feels right and it's what she would do. Yeah. Um. And yeah, so, but that's also become a bit of a superpower for her because so many fans have real experiences with her yeah. and real connections. And also she has made fame accessible in a way that no other celebrity ever will. So that will always be a part of what I do with her. Like mm. always spend a certain amount of time with fans. I still remember Jessica Malboy. I did a, hosted a big concert for her years ago, maybe five years ago. And you just absolutely, when you're at that level, you just don't need to hang around after the show. And she spent 45 minutes with the fans, taking photos, doing all that stuff. As did Sharon, by the way. I mean, yes, as did Sharon. Sharon spent 90 minutes. She, yeah. like, she stayed longer. But I was really impressed at that and I really admired that. I thought that's so great because mm. that, that really shows you know, you know what's made you. Yeah. You know, as, as much as there's other, fact, other factors. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think yeah. that stuff is important. The obvious uh, question that springs to mind to me is um, what's the intersection between Bonnie and Sharon? <laughs> <laughs> Shani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the intersection? That was an interesting moment for me when I first started working on character stuff by myself. Yeah. And I was trying to, and I think I would occasionally would get someone in the room to, but I started listing different qualities about us. Mm. And for me, when I first created her, she was so different to me. You know, she was mm. married three times. I've never been married. She has four kids. I have no kids. Um, you know, she lives in the suburbs. I live in the city. Like, so yeah. everything is just in my mind. She wore makeup all the time. I didn't even really wear makeup much. That Like, I. Yeah. she was hyper glam, did her nails and I, everything was so different. Yeah. And, um, and then... And so that was really easy for me to switch into Shaz and switch over to Bonnie and into Shaz. Right, yeah. Easy. But then when I started making her have more depth, actually I realised we shared values. And because of course we did, because yeah. I created her. Yeah, exactly. It's like when you create a business, you know, you just... And also because I have to live her all the time. Yes. That's just a really... And do you know when I first realized that would be I, really hard if it's yeah. <laughs> character that has if you have to live, diametrically different it values. It just set. wouldn't, yeah. And it, um, <sighs> after the fringe, you know, where I first the psychological tested psychological load would be enormous. There's a lot going on. It's <laughs> funny because oh no, but it's true because most people just see little. They see a little aspect of her. Um, but one of the challenges we had, even in the character development, was like, sure, now we have all this information. How do we, how do we freaking where do I keep this? Do you know, in a yeah. way that's accessible, simple. Where's the repository? <laughs> yeah. That like, so I've kind of got this 360 world of her where there's her like home life and her storylines and her character development. And cause it's not just where she is now. It's like where she is in 10 years yeah. and, and where she's been. What, yeah, where she's been, what's made her who she is and what was just who she was anyway. Um, you know, being bullied in school to, you know, now she's going and doing school presentations for one of her twins who's getting bullied, which obviously is making it worse. <laughs> she's, yeah. you know, like she, like where is she at in her story cycles is all there. We're just about, we're finishing off that and building that out more and more now. There's the social media side, there's the corporate gigs, there's jokes, there's, you know, there's let alone all the bookings and business strategy stuff yeah, behind yeah. her that people don't see. They just see like a little flash of her, yeah. but there's all this other stuff that they, yeah. Mm. But um, I was going to say before, yeah, and to hold that in a 360 way that it's consistent no matter what way. You, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. No matter how you slice it, yeah. you know, her character has to be 
consistent. Her looks have to be consistent. Yeah. Her approach has to be consistent. She can't be one thing for one people and one thing her for another. Her roving responses have to be consistent. Do yeah. You, like I had to actually, we had to figure out why she would give her spotlight to someone else to take a photo because that was starting to happen with some fans. She has her own spotlight, which yeah. makes photos look amazing. Yeah. So, of course, you do a bunch of selfies with people, but every one in a hundred will say, oh, my gosh, could we get a photo of me and my friends with this spotlight, you know, without Sharon? Yeah. And as a character, why would she do that? Like, yeah, why yeah. would she? Yeah. And then we realised every t- well, me and the, the group that we were There has to be with, a qualification. Uh, yeah, there has to be a qualification. And basically every time she does that, she's like, look at me, I'm being so charitable. I'm just doing a bit of charity. I'm just helping. Shh. Did right. you see? You know, like she... She will hold the spotlight for yeah. them as long as everybody knows she's holding the spotlight for them. No, I'm so generous. This is I do charity work all the time. This is just I'm just charity a classic work. celebrity, you know, like because you know char- char- charity work is so important and all that kind of stuff. Um, so like you know, but just negotiating those moments where you still yes. don't have to be an asshole because she yes. is generous and she wants people to look good in photos. She navigating her also wanting to be in all the photos. <laughs> exactly. Versus like. How does she still get the attention? Yeah, and um, I was just going to say at the end of the first Fringe show, that was when she became famous, Sharon, because I realised she had a really good run, project, Fringe Awards, VIP tours, and done a season that had done all right, and she had her name in lights and all sorts of stupid stuff. And um, I was like, okay, this is a thing. Mm. But at the same time, it was a thing. It was like a, a runaway train. Like I, I was just chasing the thing. <laughs> like yeah. for two years, I was just like, ah! oh my goodness um and then two years in I had to decide that I really wanted her and that was a really scary moment too but Mm. at the first beginning bit we were literally just trying to figure out I had a producer working with me and he and I were trying to figure out what the social media handle should be yeah and what her website should be she was still a talent agent yeah I was like well she's all about fame you know fame is her thing and then I was like oh famous Sharon like actually, she should just be called Famous Sharon because that's hilarious. Yeah. That because if you're famous, you don't need to tell people you are. <laughs> and um, I have this. Yeah. I have this thing, right? Long long story short, I have this thing whereby when you read a CV when someone's recruit, if they write in the little profile section, I am enigmatic or high charisma or high energy, you're like. No, they're not. Yes. It's like... No, a, they are not. Someone's like, I'm so crazy. Are yeah. you? <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. Do you know not. what? People who are like, woo, I'm just, I'm off the hook. Oh, you can't, yeah. you know, I'm so funny. I'm so off the hook. I yeah. need to tell you. <laughs> yeah. It's like, if you're off the hook on a weekend, we will mm. know. <laughs> we can see you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, she calls herself Famous Sharon. And then I realized it was, oh, she's very famous for nothing at all. Yep. And as soon Which, as like I... like you said, is on Vogue. In Vogue, and as soon as I thought of that, I went, oh, my God, that's a really good idea. Yeah. I don't think I should do this. <laughs> yeah. I actually thought I should sell it to someone else. Right. Or I should give this to somebody else because, actually, that's a good idea. Yes. My first instinct was to give it to somebody else. Mm. Which is so interesting. Um, but, I'm so glad I didn't. But, but you know, I asked earlier on about... Um, getting to the edges of, of things. Surely being famous for absolutely nothing at yeah. all, <laughs> right? And the fact that... That she owns it. Like she that she owns loves it. it. But, but that in and of itself is... You know, how, how many... How, yeah, that in and of itself... How its, many people would admit that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, interestingly, we've trademarked it. Um, and we're working through the trademarks in America and the mm. Europe as well. Because that in and of itself is... Because no one an, wants it as yeah, a title. It is an enormous um, spotlight on yeah. <laughs> all that we seem to be, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, um, uh, praising and, and looking towards. Yeah. You know, like, let's take the archetypes of it, you know, like the Cardassian family. Yeah. What, what are they actually famous for? Yeah. Well, not. Yeah. <laughs> well, not really. Just a family doing family things and being a bit off the hook. Yeah. On a TV program. Yeah. And now look where it's become. And they've built businesses out of it too. They have. They have, like, they have. built a machine. Which is sad on one level. Yeah. <laughs> that we just let this thing grow. 
but um yeah yeah, yeah. it is interesting because there's definitely there's a weird tension I find or there's a weird crossover where it is ridiculous but it's also inspiring do you know like Sharon is mm, mm, has mm. taught me a lot about putting yourself out there and just owning what you have and celebrating yourself. I think she really celebrates so people. Bonnie celebrate Bonnie more. Thanks to Way Sharon. more. Well, do you <laughs> know the, to Sharon. the first thing that happened was that <laughs> it's so funny Yeah. To be it's so about true. The third person. It's so weird. It doesn't actually exist. Don't say that. No, she but does. does. Yeah, but, but she does. does. Yeah. But does. Is a meme. Mm. <laughs> and that Not she's had real. such a big impact on my life. Like She's my hit song, and um, I'm fi- do you know what I'm finding this whole conversation? Like, it's fascinating to understand the life and the development of <laughs> comedians, right? On that level, it's fascinating. But the thing that's that's really me is the whole existential challenge of yeah the memes of someone's identity yeah. that comes in and out of yeah. one you know vessel. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, it is weird. Well, and it's stuff that I think about <laughs> probably more than people would realise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I bet. Think. Because for me, if I lose my way a little bit, then that comes up in her. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she taught me to self-care because I used to do gigs. You know, I would like run from producing work or run from yeah. an ad- admin job or whatever and run on stage and be exhausted or not changed you said when I arrived out you know in amongst many things that have happened you've still managed to go to the gym and sleep stay centered yeah 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 yeah. um and that's super important for Sharon because if I could turn up half mast and kind of get through something it doesn't matter but she can't no she has to be on on ball yeah Yeah. she has to be on brand and that wouldn't be her to rock up tired like that's not in her character (laughs) <laughs> like it's mostly because it would break her character for her yeah, to yeah, yeah. rock up like half done. Like she wouldn't leave the house without a makeup on. Like, yeah. you know, way yeah, she yeah, sleeps yeah. with it sometimes. Like, <laughs> like I woke up like this. You know, like yeah, literally, yeah. Dolly Parton sleeps with her makeup on in case there's a fire, like <laughs> so that she will look yeah fabulous. Um, yeah. So that was interesting because famous Sharon. People were really worried about me in the early days. First, they were worried because a few months in, I think by March. So January was fringe. By March, I'd stopped doing comedy as Bonnie. Yeah. I was like, we're competing. I tried to do both. Yeah. I was like, people obviously want her, not me. They just do. Yeah. But I don't feel any pain saying that. But other people were like, oh, no. Yeah. How do you feel? Yeah. They want her, not you. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even think, in my mind, I didn't even <laughs> she think what well, she's me. I was like, well, fuck yeah. Like, it's great. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let, let her roll. Yeah. I don't know, just follow what's working rather than resisting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was having so much fun doing her yeah, yeah. that and, it didn't bother me. And she's on an off switch as well. Yeah. Didn't she? <laughs> and also it's amazing like oh, I made the mistake once I did a gig because I would do a gig like in the Spiegel tent at Fringe, especially I did lots of Fringe shows in the early days, do a gig in the Spiegel tent, be all glamorous and fabulous and multiple costumes and big hair and all the stuff. And then I would de shaz and I would look like a drowned rat, you know, like yeah. my hair was all sweaty and I'd brush it down. It would just look shit. I would barely have any makeup on. Like I would, I didn't even wear fake lashes at that point. So I was like really um, a, a sweaty shadow disheveled. of myself. <laughs> yeah, really disheveled. So people just wouldn't know. Like I would just be around the fans that have just seen her and they would not know. And then it's one day. Nice as well. Uh, yeah, it was amazing. It was a really. Because Shaz, that's why Shaz can switch on and off, is because she would go off and have a bubble bath. Yeah. But I can, um, anyway, whatever. Yeah, I came out and I saw a fan that had been like a big part of the show because I think we improvise a lot. Yeah. I improvise a lot. Um, and Shaz, Shaz does, we, whatever. Anyway, Shaz improvises a lot. And at the, I came out onto the dance floor and I waved at her because I forgot that I'm not, that she doesn't know who I am. <laughs> Yeah. Because she'd just been yes. seeing Sharon and she was so shocked. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I've got to, because she realised, like, you know, yeah. she was like, why is this weird person waving yeah. at me? And then she realised. 
and um she probably went home a little bit crushed yes, yeah. she actually came <laughs> no up she said she, she put her hands like either side of my face and went oh no bring back the feathers yeah. <laughs> i was like i just thought it was so yeah. funny but other people were really like sad for me they're like oh that's so sad that she said that to you and i was like oh Not really. i just don't take it personally because i totally get it like yeah. Famous Sharon is fabulous. Like mm. she's amazing. Yeah. And that's her power is that she isn't me. So why would I I don't know. I just didn't get that worried about it all. Um yeah. And so it's interesting that um yeah, one comedian who really didn't know me very well. Just that weird thing when I I became less available to people around me. He probably took me for granted a bit and mm. used me up. You know, I would give everything to everyone. And especially open micers, I remember a couple of open micers would ask me to come down and watch them and give them feedback. And I had an incident where I went down, I watched this person do comedy, I gave them feedback and they just threw it back in my face, every bit of feedback. I was like, oh, well, this would be really good if you did this. And they're like, no, well, I like doing it this way because of this. And I was like, I gave up my night. Yeah. Like, you're not paying me. I'm being really generous and you're not even ready to work on yourself. Yeah. I just started cutting those people out of my life. Yeah. And um, I had one of those open micers come back to me a few years later and say, oh, I never see you now. And you, famous Sharon has, you know, um, I never see you. Just and, you yeah, just, you know, like as though, you know, this big um, drama. And then a few years later I heard someone tell me that that person had said to them, they said, yeah, I'm really worried about you. This is years later. I'm really worried about you because that person told me that famous Sharon's really ruined your life. (laughs) I was like, excuse me? I was like, oh, no, famous Sharon has taught me to look after myself Mm. because if I don't put boundaries down now, if I don't spend time with good people who appreciate me and I appreciate them, do you know it's like a real conversation, not just me giving myself over Do you know the only people that are upset that I have boundaries now are the ones that benefited from me not having Having boundaries. And so actually Famous Sharon has not ruined my life. She's kind of saved it a bit. Like she's really making me invest in myself, celebrate myself because I care. Sadly, at that point, I cared more about her than I did about me. Do you know, I was more prepared to not let her down than I was to let myself down. Wow. Which I've shifted a lot in the last couple of years through therapy and self-work and whatever. But that was actually probably reality. So in a way, she saved me and There's got me to start. Like <laughs> quite incredible out of the whole consciousness, yeah. which is Bonnie, that's, that's just quite amazing about what you just said there. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's just the truth. But yeah, so yeah. That, that I, famous Sharon had actually ruined their ruined me for them yes if she hadn't ruined me at all yes. and I was like I said to the person who relayed that story to me I said wow they really don't know me at all mm. they just and people will say whatever they want but they just have no idea who I am yeah and I have so done a lot of work scope, on myself so is there a scope for famous Sharon to become a self-help guru mm. <laughs> I don't think so I think she kind of incidentally is just by the energy um she started almost going down that way a little bit because I was getting so much from her. Yeah. But I think it's really important that she isn't. Yeah. Because she's not. Like, you know, like, know. And, she, and that's where I think I was trying to make her too perfect. Yes. And actually she's flawed and she's trying hard and she's just so not nailing it. And so, <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's perfect. But, you know, like her yeah. thing is just um, being famous. And I think for her fame is celebration. Yes. And interestingly like especially women really are drawn to her and I think they are really under celebrated or they're just freaking ready to be celebrated yes you know they've reached the age where they're like cool my kids are older I've done my time yeah <laughs> step aside it's, <laughs> like, like, it's a bit like what you said earlier on with the, the the third of the people who don't want to ask for shout yes like, yeah oh, yeah they they need oh, to be celebrated they need that. but they're not ready to say you know that but then role there's the out there ones. of celebration yeah and I definitely, like, you know, if I approach a big group of people, Shaz will go to the people who want her first yeah. because that bit's like build, building momentum. Yeah. And also you don't want to try and like heat up, you know, all these yeah. cold <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. cold cups of tea. Like go, well, this is a hot <laughs> cup of tea. Like let's have fun. Um, 
play with them and then just naturally the momentum because people see Sharon having yeah, fun. Yeah, warms up the others. Just keeps, yeah. And also I always have respect for people who just don't want to participate. That no, is just want to so watch. so fine, yeah. That you need an audience. That's what she was like. She said, oh, I'm glad you don't because we need audiences. <laughs> like, otherwise I'm not famous. Um, and also if they don't want to have a selfie, she'll just say, that's okay, Daz. You can just photobomb and work your way up, you know, like, you have a place in this world too. It's okay, yes. you know. It's a ladder towards yeah. all of it. Yeah, because sometimes their friends will be like, "No, get a selfie, get a selfie." And Shaz will be like, "No, no, no, it does no. Just start by photo bombing. You know, put your hands up behind photos and <laughs> see how you go. You know, it's okay. You'll get there." Mm. Um, yeah, because I like having respect for where people are at. We're all at different stages, and where does right? This might seem like a strange question, but still in this <laughs> sort of existential challenge bit, which I'm finding <laughs> fun. Where does Bonnie go while famous Sharon's out? I generally am not really there. I am there. So, so do you get so do you get to like the end of the you know, you do a session, you do the rove, this, that, and the other, you come back to a changing room, you take stuff off, and yeah. it's almost like, Oh, hello you again. <laughs> I guess it depends what I'm doing. Like if I'm yeah. if I'm on a shoot, I am there. And if I'm doing an awards night or something like that. I have to be there to make sure Shaz is where she needs to be. <laughs> it's like I'm there managing her for yeah. her. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I'm probably more there than I used to be. I think I used to really just switch into her or switch off. Yeah. I used to never break character either, even backstage, whereas now I do yeah. break character backstage um, just because it's a bit a bit much for everyone else <laughs> I love that look. having to be much. around. One of my friends, I've stayed in character for like an hour trip with her in Sydney and she was like, you bitch. <laughs> like, I just want to talk to Bonnie. <laughs> like, <laughs> She's not. <coming. laughs> um, but I'm really careful about that in front of any public because it, it's a bit too weird. If yeah. people don't know me, yeah. it's a weird, it's just a weird character. You know, it's uncomfortable to see yes. her break. Yeah. So I'm very much in character. She has her own phone. She has her own, she always has an assistant with her now for Metro gigs as well. So she's very much Sharon. Yes. And she won't pick up bags or do anything. She just gets her assistant to do everything. Yeah. Um, whereas I will carry the bags. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. not that person. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I am there. But, yeah, I think I had to make peace with the crossover of yeah. us to be able to be there but not feel like I was breaking character by being there yes. behind the scenes. Right. Yeah. But um, generally when, I don't know, it just comes out of her. Didn't it? Like a, Especially... I have shazzed a few people and I'm actually going to shaz the um, CEO of Fringe World next year. She's, her name's Sharon as well. She's asked if I'll yeah. shaz her, which means putting her in like Sharon makeup, a big outfit and fabulous hair. Yeah. And I did that for a journo um, who's sadly passed away now. She's an amazing journalist. And the first time I ever shazzed anyone was with her and because she was interviewing me. Yeah. She's like, what's it like, you know, when you put everything on and you go out there and I was like, well, let's do it. Like, do you want me to shaz you? She was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And it was, she, she said, I feel different. She's like, yeah. I feel more fabulous. I feel more like I'm ready for anything. And I was like, yeah, you, it's oh, the kind of, that's what happens when I, I, she, cause I have a whole yeah. routine getting ready with her now as well. I've learned yeah. to, you know, give myself an hour off by myself, but then also I put on pop music and like have a shower I do the makeup, and as you're transforming, you really like you feel more fabulous. Do you know? It's like if yeah. you put on a really good outfit, yeah, to go out, you feel good. Yeah, like you walk differently. And I'm pretty you sure hold everyone yourself differently. has probably got a relatable experience of going to, let's even say, a fancy dress costume, yeah. where all of a sudden suddenly you know, they are the... you are that thing. Yeah, you know, if it if it's boys dressing up as centurions or yes, something. I don't absolutely. know. It's you done. hold your shoulders differently. Yeah, you like, got to. You're swaggering, yeah. you're doing this, you're doing that. Yeah. Mm. So I think that helps me be her as well. And also because if Sharon walks into the room like she does, people respond differently. Mm. So then you automatically, the conversation starts at a different point anyway. It's already ridiculous. Yeah. And I often forget that. So I'm doing less gigs at the moment because of COVID and I'm doing less gigs for more money and transitioning into a new era of Shaz anyway. Um, and so it means I'm a little bit less, you know, when you're doing two or three or four or five gigs a week, 
you're really in the rhythm yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but because I'm doing less, I have to keep reminding myself of the prep and trust the shaz and whatever. <laughs> and like one of the first gigs I did back in a couple of months was a dairy. Oh, I was a dairy and there was another one. But anyway, I was really surprised because it's such a cold room when you first walk in. They really don't know who she is or anything. But her outfits alone are a bit of an icebreaker because they're so fabulous. Yeah. I just, as soon as I walked in, people responded. I was like, oh, that's right. <laughs> like, and people... Trust the Shaz. People trust the Shaz, yeah. Like, she's got this. Because yeah. she's so fabulous anyway. And then if she's funny or interesting on top of that, yeah, you know, it's layers. So where's Shaz going? Uh, immediately or in the future. Yeah, or, yeah. Um, well, definitely Hollywood is, obviously. Um, yep. So L.A., is where she would like to go because that's where all the Hollywood stars are. So it makes sense. That's her long-term trajectory. Mm -hmm. And we are in the process of trademarking very famous for nothing at all in America so that she can send Kim Kardashian a cease and desist on arrival. (laughs) (laughs) Just so immediately, you know, this will be five years down the track or whenever it is, but immediately on landing she will be at the same, she'll be in the same sentence as Kim Kardashian at least in a few news outlets, I think I think the news will really pick up on that silliness. Yes. That someone's telling Kim she can't do it, even though she was one of the first. <laughs> yes. Her in Paris. And also that Kim doesn't want to be famous for nothing at all. She wants people to know about her. Yes. Her fashion lines and all the other, and you know, her law degrees and all the other things that she's doing. Yes. Shame, Sharon doesn't, shameless Sharon, <laughs> shameless Sharon doesn't, she doesn't shameless care. Shameless Sharon. Um, yeah, but immediately we're at the moment, the short term thing is that we're, I've, um, Royal We, but um, I've just been working on the Famous Sharon website. Yeah. Because I realised I hadn't really, it had been there for years and we hadn't really thought about, I hadn't really thought about why it exists. Mm. And people book her through Jello, which is my other company anyway. And, you know, I just thought, why is it there? Yeah. Like, what? what am I doing with it? Yeah. And then I saw a couple of fans like trying to find their favorite videos of Shaz and scrolling through Facebook and there's so much crap on there as much as there's some good stuff. Yeah. Um, and they couldn't find the right video and I realized, oh, the website's for the fans. A repository. It's just, it's for them to be able to find all the stuff and just dig. You know, when you really love something, you just want to find as much as you can about it. It's just a treasure trove of Shaz for them. Yeah. So it's a famous Sharon fan club and she's the president. And so we've been working on the (laughs) first. Of course she is. And she's her own number one fan. So when people are like, I'm your number one fan, she's like, well, no, I am. But, you know, you can join the Champion League. (laughs) Like, um And that has been a really nice process. It was really hard for me to write some of it because I just feel like it's actually really important. Yeah. Especially as I'm doing less shows. Mm. Sharon's actually not able to see her regulars. You know, like there's super fans who have supported her from the beginning. I love seeing them and they're so wonderful. But I just literally can't, like I'm just not seeing people as much as her especially if we're doing corporates or regional tours, mm. there's less op- access. Yeah. I was like, well, this gives people an opportunity to access her in a way that's really fun and they feel valued. You know, they don't get not seen at the back of a crowd or, you know, they can be rewarded for yeah. for being her super fans as well. Yeah, so we're calling it the Champion League because her fans are her champions and they champion her <laughs> and make her more famous. Uh, so you can be a champion without joining the Champion League, but by joining the Champion League, it becomes official. Yeah. So then there's a little bit more of we're building out other things attached to that. So I'm super excited about that because I think that fan power will be what propels her. propels her. And also I looked and did a whole lot of research and the only person who has anything similar is Beyonce, which is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but she's most, famous for doing something. Yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> so... Um, but most celebrities and most people, most public entities don't really have a treasure trove. Yes. So, um, you know, they have their gig listings. Dolly Parton has a treasure trove in terms of information. Yep. But she doesn't have interactive options. Mm. So Shaz will be crossing over both those sides, which would be really cool. Mm. I'm excited about that. But yeah, at the moment I'm just practicing Shaz. I've got to make her funnier, more fabulous. 
and just enjoy being mm -hmm. here and just practicing the character stuff and more layers. Um, yeah, and just I'm really not very good at doing online videos or social media, not for where she should be. And I know that if I get good at that, that'll be the thing that flips her over to the next. She's already flipping over in terms of corporate work, but yeah. just in terms of profile, that'll be the next flip. Yeah, so I've just got to keep practicing being shit, basically. Practicing <laughs> like, being like, shit. Because I just have to fail in front of people constantly, which yeah. I think held me back a lot in the earlier years. And now I think I've worked a lot on my own sense of value and purpose. And do you know what? I'm in the arena and I'm doing this shit and I'm learning and I'm fighting the fires and figuring it out. Yes. And so I'm really careful about whose feedback I yes. take on as well. And trolls don't affect me too much. But Shaz has started getting trolled, so then that's a really good sign because that means she's getting, she's reaching wider audiences. Yes. Um, but that is like interesting, you know. I try to not give the weight to just the general cacophony because everyone yeah. has an opinion. Yes. And a lot of people really feel like they co-own Shaz a bit because they've been there since the beginning. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, co -own, have, yeah. Yeah. Even like she's not really she's not political. Yeah. Um, but people want to use her for the political things now. Hmm. But I I'm very careful about how she positions things and yeah. where she sits in that to keep her character hmm. true. Yes. And, you know, Bonnie personally can be involved in things that Sharon can't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even, you know, there's a few different um, charitable kind of stuff or just communities and worlds that Shaz definitely wants to celebrate more. But from her perspective as a character, it's because she can't believe they're not celebrated. Right. Do you yeah. know? And, it, and, it's, mm. and it's very much not about pulling people up. It's just about giving them the stage for a bit. Like, yeah, a bit know, more like, celebration. Let them do their thing. Do, um, yeah, because I think that saviour approach to charity is really dangerous as well. Mm. And so, you know, kind of trying to navigate those lines behind the scenes. Yeah. And I'm going to make mistakes. I've made mistakes. Oh, yeah. Some big mistakes in the past. So that's just going to happen. But as long as I'm at peace with it and mm. I can work on my own shit, then other people can just worry about their stuff. Mm. As Sharon says, don't get jealous. Get, get famous. <laughs> Stop spending all your time, you know, all that time you spend being jealous or angry at other people. Yeah. Um, which has its place as well, but... Um, not that anger or whatever is a bad thing, but just, you know, that nastiness or like, yes. you've changed. <laughs> I was like, no shit. Like, I fucking yeah. changed a lot. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm going to keep changing. Yeah, this yeah. Is, That's what we this do. This is the whole point. Yeah. Indeed. How do you find that um, based, based on your experience of creating the character, going out and, and doing what you've done and being on the journey? How is it for you looking into the world now, you know, interacting with you know, other people on an everyday body basis, not the art of shouts? What do you mean? Well, I guess, you know, you've been on a journey yeah. with a character and developed something, learned loads of stuff about yes. yourself yeah. and, this, and, and different layers to that journey. How is it for you to look out into the world, into people you know, whether they're friends or associates or colleagues or stuff like that and 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 do you see into them more deeply does that oh yeah does no, that, that make sense no, that doesn't make sense yeah I think um it's interesting because I used to really not value myself so much mm. and really only got my sense of value from being of service to other people um and the shadow side of that the kind of bad extreme of that was trying to fix everyone Yes. Um, not just to fix them, but you know, you know, if it even gets worse, it's to prove myself. <laughs> mm. um, and I think I also just wanted to prove myself to people really early on. I think I, um, I've realised recently, it's funny because it so crosses over with Sharon, um, but I really can tell when people don't notice me mm. properly. Like they don't really see me, if that makes sense. Because I'm a combination of very serious, like I take things quite seriously, <laughs> which I like also try to dial back. Come on, Davies. Um, but also I'm super silly and a bit stupid. Um, 
my sister has the same like, Tri- dichotomy cut, yeah, yeah, going on. We're both really intelligent, but we're also really silly. And our whole family laughs a lot. And we're really yeah. like, um, so I find often people just see one of those. They don't see both. Yes. Um, and so uh, anyway, I think I really was trying to show people either one of those sides if they yeah. you know if they didn't see that side then I felt like I had to show them that side and prove and now I just don't just don't care as much mm. I just don't really care because I've got um, you're good in yourself yeah I've just been working on myself and spending more time with myself and I feel really comfortable in who I am and the choices I'm making and mm. I'm definitely not perfect um yeah I just worry less about the external viewpoint as much as it's important for branding and Sharon and, and even my own you know the way I present mm. myself for talk I am still conscious of that because you can't not be yeah um but it's not a focus for me anymore yeah if that makes sense that sort of desperate need to yeah and also, be of service and help and, and be of, of value to others yeah doing things for the wrong reasons like I think now I'm really clear about who I am and where I'm going and if there's ever things that are a little bit of a quandary, I, I think about them. I try to be open to questioning or, you know, unlearning things. Mm. I mean, there's all sorts of things going on in the world to to figure out and evolve. And I want to change. I want to grow as a person. I think that's uncomfortable but exciting. And um, so I do really notice now, though, because I kind of deal with things so head on, I think, oh, was it someone came over the other day for a barbecue or like a, like a drink in the courtyard and he said, oh, I just find um, I find when people were talking about dating and relationships, he's like, I just am never attracted to the people who are attracted to me. It's like when they, when someone's attracted to me, I just, oh, you know? And I was like, yeah, because you value yourself so little <laughs> that if they see anything in you, you think less of them. And Ooh. he went, oh, oh. <laughs> like I just kind of had a truth spear for him. Truth spear, I like that. <laughs> yeah, because I, I was, because that's exactly what was happening. Yeah. Um, could because we've been talking about all sorts of other things as well, and I guess I just, and it's great when I'm having conversations with people who want to talk about the truth. I love those conversations because mm. I get the truth spears back. As mm. well, do you know? Because there's always yes. that unconscious you get a lot of them on this podcast. Yes. Sit there, listen to people and go, oh, oh that's me. Yeah, it's <laughs> too real. Um, yeah. And I have to work through that discomfort myself, you know, like having someone go, hey, well, mm. do you think maybe it's because of this? I'm like, oh, damn it. You know, there's got to be truth in it because it's so painful. I can't unsee this. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, um, someone said a realisation is when once you've had a realisation, you, you see the world differently. Yes. And you just can't unrealize something. Yes. Um, so I it's think it's kind of the basis of that question, which is, you know, people go on journeys or they, yeah. they they think about certain things or they have these experiences, and then the result is that they can look more deeply inside themselves, which then means that they can look, look more deeply into the world. Yeah, yeah. And then the two start to come together, and and it paints a lot more color into your life in terms of meaning and mm. and purpose and ease and grace. I find. And it's um, yeah, and it's it's a jo- like it's 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 a joy of life. I think of mm. you know, seeing things unfurl and unfold. I think I used to see those things in other people. I'd see things in people that they weren't seeing or whatever, and feel like um, I wanted them to join me. You know, like a boy yeah. again. Like, Guys, come this way. Come on. Like, oh, get on board. Start valuing yourself. It's real hard work, but you should give it a go. Um, or whatever, and um. Now I have much more respect for where people are at. Yes. Do you know? And that when Not they're ready. Their journey. Yeah, and like, and some people just, especially in the arts, we really, as an industry, we undersell ourselves. Mm. We undervalue what we do. We scapegoat other people who do value what they do. Like we, we, almost reject our peers who, you know, they're sellouts or they, all sorts of weird weird words that we automatically give people. Um, yeah, it's just interesting. There's a lot of stuff there that is happening all the time, just as an industry, let alone as people, which I think universally. Yeah. And business owners on top of that, if you're an independent artist, you're a business yeah. owner as well, you know, mm. the 
self-doubts, all those things, so many things going on for people that sometimes, you know, they're just not ready for what I have. Yes. So I feel like I, for a while, I, a bit too I felt bright, a bit guilty. I was just like, oh, I feel like I've got all these secrets that I need to tell everyone. But now I've just found the right places to share them. So I always do a guest lecture mm-hmm. with the Whopper Arts Management students because they're really keen to know what's really going on. Mm. How do I really solve these problems? Or, um, and you know, like business planning models or mm. eat the frog or all the stuff that I wish I'd learned mm. when I first started. I just tell them now. And yes. if they're ready, they'll take it on board. Yeah. And also, yeah. my mum's a waste education person. And she says, I'll talk about it too. <laughs> She's like, I talk rubbish. I'll talk rubbish all day and night. She used to say, I work at the tip and I talk rubbish. And she said, um, She's always said some people aren't ready to make their own soap or do all these things, mm. but at least they know they can. Yes. So that when they are ready or they start thinking, well, I do use a lot of plastic in my home, they know that there's stuff out there they can go find. They know where to go. Yeah, yeah and so that's kind of, I, and I think um, uh, when I found any success previously, I used to try and share the success. Mm. Like, oh, I've got to. Give them tell money everybody away. This. Yeah, I've got to tell everyone how I did this. I've got to, oh, I've got to share all this stuff. Um, and often people weren't ready for it. Mm. Or they're just not even on that same trajectory, you know, like whatever. Everyone you can never know someone's full experience of where they're at. Mm. Um, and whereas now I just role model. I'm like, yes. Well, I'm just going to be it. This is for me. This, is, this is just how I'm going to do yeah. my life. And then if people want to know or they're curious, mm. then I will share that generously um, but also with boundaries for myself. So, mm. yeah, I've recently just um, maybe had of Traction that, um, by Gina Whitman, that book. He's got some really great, just all the um, intel of all the business books in the world basically simplified. And he's got a two-page strategic plan and an L10 agenda, like two really simple documents. I've completely blown my world apart in terms of focus and right. whatever. Um, and instead of trying to have like all these different conversations with independent artists, I'm just getting about 14 powerhouse people from WA. They all happen to be women actually. I think it just it's a whole lot of independent artists that are just flipping over. Yeah. Um, Lucy Peach, Andrew Gibbs, I don't know if you've heard of. Lucy's been on the podcast. Ah, she's amazing. Yeah. Um, I can't wait for her Netflix special. I just feel like that will be, yeah. <laughs> like, the thing that makes her a worldwide mm. um, star. It's got to happen. The world needs it. Um, yeah, but they're just, you know, they're flip- we're all flipping over. But to have, like, a flipping tool, like, meaning. like, flipping to the next level. Yes. And um, But to have this tool that I've just, I paid a lot of money for a business coach for it. They're never going to get the access to it. So we're all just going to sit in a room together and we're going to walk through it together and they'll all be able to create their own VTOs. But they're all oh, the two-page strategic plan Yes. Um, that I found really powerful. But it's interesting because I've purposely chosen those people because I know they're ready for it. Yeah. And, and I actually had a booking come up the same day and I ended up turning down the booking because I tried to move the day. But yeah. we couldn't find a day where everyone was free again. We're like, you know what? This is such a special moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Let's just get everyone in the room and share our ideas and connect and, and build this. So I think, I, you know, I'm really happy to give up a day of my time for free and hire the venue or whatever. Yeah, when it's high quality. When I, it's high quality and I know they're ready for it and they'll appreciate it. And even if it's not quite what they need, they'll get something they want out of it. Yeah. Um, because Andrew Horrigan, I think I mentioned to you, before we even started this podcast is how I've met a lot of um, really amazing mentors in WA, mm. um, including Mike House, who's been on the podcast a couple of times. And um, and Andrew just did that. He yes. paid for the venue, just brought people together. There was no sales funnel. Yeah. There was no, oh, you Oh, we know, can talk about this oh. for ages, the lack of, there's no need to commercialise help or connection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just... But it was also in a way that, um, you know, he was super busy, so he would bring 20 or so people together to meet and chat about ideas and he would facilitate the day but also keep it pretty loose. Mm. Um, And that totally changed my life. 
at the same time, there were a few other comedians that went along to that and did not take up any of the <laughs> learnings. You know, they weren't ready for it. Mm. Um, but for me, who was just dying to know how to do things better and was really lost at sea, mm. um, those meetings and those get-togethers that he created totally changed my world. I just soaked it all up like a sponge. So um, it feels good to be able to, yeah, you know, facilitate those kind mm. of moments for other people. Because I still have other people who are killing it. You know, Shaz is doing so well, but it's so funny because really, like I have so many colleagues or associates who are, you know, worldwide superstars. <laughs> it's like yeah. They've got millions of followers or they got shows on Stan or Netflix or doing comedy specials or, do you know, the, mm. the scale of what's possible is huge. Yeah. And I have so much to learn and I feel like I'm going to learn some really hard stuff in the next couple of years. Yeah. Especially as Shaz starts really shifting. Mm. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. I um, really like my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what you said earlier on, you know, you're on you're on the precipice of being an overnight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, which I like. I like that WA might be able to I like that I might be able to pull back the curtain a bit on that stuff. And yes. I'm quite honest on my Instagram about the challenges I've had or you know, when I was doing, I broke up with a long-term partner a couple of years ago and that was a real moment of shifting for me. I think he was holding me back a bit. Yeah. Just the relationship was holding us both back yeah. in different ways. Um, yeah, and I've always been really honest about the hard stuff because mm. as much as you can see all the shiny stuff, there's a lot mm. of hard self-work that goes on underneath. Yes. And I think if people And even don't being famous for that, nothing comes at a cost. Yes! <laughs> I know, and actually it's funny, I almost have to write Shaz's own storyline of what that is behind, because mm. I've got my own journey. Yeah, yeah, which is separate to body. She also needs to have her own journey. Yeah, how did I get here? Yeah, because she is getting more and more famous now. So yeah, she's her own hero's journey. Yeah, she is. Super. The last question I ask all my guests, which is a hypothetical one, but I enjoy listening to the answer, is um, if I could slow everybody down, like everyone, uh, five or ten minutes and then Bonnie could upload a question into the collective consciousness just so everybody sat down and chilled out and thought about it what would that be? Oh my goodness like yeah that's such an interesting question I guess it would be what really makes you happy Because I think we get told what makes us happy or we assume we know what makes us happy or content. And we very rarely just sit down and consider what really does. Mm. Life is so fast that we just keep going for the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, the Happiness Podcast is really good. The Happiness Lab is what it's called. Mm. That was a really great podcast for me to reflect on. And again, if I expand on that, the reason I would ask that is because that's one of the realisations I had is that there were lots of people telling me what success was and telling me what the milestones should be and mm. where Shaz should be and what she should be doing and she has so much potential that everybody always has a thousand ideas. Yes. She should absolutely have her own reality show. It'll only be two minutes long because that's all the reality she can handle. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, like, yes, she should have a website. Yes, she should have her name. Like, yes, all these things. And, yes, that will make me happy. But actually what makes me happy is enjoying the ride. Yes. Because I'm going to live this for the rest of my life. So if I'm always trying to get the next thing and I never am grateful for what I have or looking back or, do you know, yeah. Um, being with my nieces makes me really happy. Like mm. I could almost cry here. I love them so much. Um, and my friends and family. So like the success stuff is all really real in terms of, you know, business success. But actually for me, my true success is when I am 
still going to the gym and still seeing my family and not that it's always consistent, you know, if I have a yeah. really big month, I see everyone less, mm. but it comes back again, you mm. know, it's like a long range balance. Yeah. Mm. It's not like a week to week life balance. That's a myth for me. Mm. It just doesn't exist in most people's worlds. But, you know, as long as I keep coming back, swinging back around to those things that are important and then back out into the world of commercial stuff and then back into creative mm. and back into family and friends, as long as I'm still orbiting around those things, it makes me so happy. Mm. But I think if I hadn't actually taken the time to think about and even just reflect, like, you know, what is a good week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is a perfect day for me? Do you know? Like, what's a perfect weekend day? Yeah. I actually started a thing in my personal life called Friend Roulette because I get very stressed out with my life is so scheduled by clients anyway. Do you know? Yeah. I can't have a sick day. I have to manage not getting sick around big bookings. Like, I just have to, especially right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have to make sure I don't put myself in a position where I'll get sick. Um, yes. And, um, uh, so yeah, and so then I, but that means my life is very scheduled mm. even in terms of more scheduled in terms mm. of rest and recovery stuff too. Like that's a lot of scheduling. So yeah. to add social scheduling on top of that just actually makes me feel ill. Like yeah. I just feel overwhelmed. So I started doing this thing called friend roulette and I just text a friend and say, it's friend roulette. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Do you want to have a drink now? <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, like, Are you available? It's immediate. And there's no, um, you know, obviously it's a ridiculous request. So if they say no, it's like, oh, well, that is fair enough. That point. It is in five minutes. Um, but then often they're free. Yeah. And then it's joy because I know I have their Whereas I, I pre-schedule everything in. I don't know what my whole week's going to be like. I don't know what things are going to come up for me that day or, mm. you know, um, I don't know where my energy's going to be at. So mm. to preload a fortnight of social events without really honouring where my body's at or my mental health or, yes. do you know, whatever else emergencies come up. Yeah, yeah. Or other things. Um, yeah, friend roulette's awesome. And now friends are starting to do it back to me. Mm. I love it. Yeah. You're available now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That took me going, I really love friends. They make me really happy. But I'm feeling really stressed out all the time when I've got like a weekend that's booked out. Yes. Back to back, no bonnie time. Mm. I need my own time. Mm. Yeah. So then like so figuring that and that's a problem to solve. Yeah, because it's so think. easy to be driven by a schedule, which is a very cerebral cognitive yeah. mind thing. Oh well, I'll do this and I'll do this and I'll do this and I'll do this and do this. Yeah. And 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 how often do we I, I start to do this more is checking with the body and the body Oof. sometimes goes, Oh fuck that. <laughs> I've actually like me in my twenties would just not have been on board for any of this, but um, you know, I, I look at my old Facebook status updates and they're all like Sleep is so annoying. <laughs> it's like, so funny. So I'm yeah. like, oh no, it's amazing, babe. Like, there it is. <laughs> like, yeah, the whole idea of stepping back to move forward, you know, taking time out to really progress mm -hmm. seemed like I just had the, okay. the approach of working hard. Like, I was working yeah. harder. I was really good. At, I'm, I'm still am really good at getting stuff done. So. Yes. But now I'm, now I try and get the right stuff done, mm. like the good stuff. Yeah. Really, really. Because the world will always take. Yeah. Oh. Feed, feed me, Leroy. <laughs> Absolutely. But I've actually, like, in the last six months, because I've done a lot of, like, about a year and a half of therapy and it was really cognitively great. Yes. Um, I kind of gone as far as I could. I felt pretty in control. Yep. And good and was working on my shit. Um, but there was still some foundational things that I felt weren't quite shifting. And I started going to people who do bodywork stuff. You know, yes. Actually, you're talking through your stuff and you just um, then let them know if you can feel it in your body. They just check in with your body because my body does not lie. It does not it lie. It does not lie. And that's been really eye-opening for me. Yeah. Great way of just figuring out the things that I haven't actually. There's your truth detector right here. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. So, Super. Yeah. I really enjoyed talking today. Oh, I'm glad. I feel like we went all sorts of different. Yeah. Oh, I, I was tempted to ask, you know, my hypothetical question of what was the question you would load up into the collective consciousness. Yeah. What would what would famous Sharon's answer be? Oh, why won't you get famous? 
What's why, stopping you? What's stopping you from being famous? Yeah. Because I think essentially fame for her is celebration. Yeah. So why wouldn't you celebrate yeah. yourself? Mm. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. It's funny how quickly hers came. I was like, oh, Indeed. yeah, I know hers. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. No, I've really enjoyed today um, for several reasons. Like the, the main one being, um, so I, I, I seldom get the opportunity to listen to just all the work that goes on behind the scenes of yeah. being a comedian. Like, you know, some something has to happen for someone to turn up and just consistently do that. <laughs> you know, but what is that? And, and uh, yeah. getting the opportunity to sit and listen to it. But then also the other thing is just the whole existential. It's going to be with me for a couple of days of having two be, two entities. Yeah, she does feel really separate too because people, yeah, you know, write to her on Instagram and and I purposely have never put myself alongside her in marketing. Like, yeah, yeah. I'll talk about her, but she will never talk about me. No, no, she just doesn't. Yeah, it's not. A, yeah, it's not. I know Barry Humphreys kind of likes to be more public, but I'm quite happy to just let her have her. Yes. Like have her, she can have her creative world and that's fine. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. So, yeah, that's been fantastically interesting just yeah. to <laughs> sit there listen to you actually just talk about this other person yeah. who sort of feels like she's here but she's not. Yeah. And, and and stuff like that. And then, you know, to get to the opportunity to ask questions about, you know, like, where does Bonnie go? Where does <laughs> go? Like, but also, it's that's funny. That's my just inquisitive mind. Because if famous Sharon was here, she would absolutely be here. Do you know, like, if I went upstairs and got shazed and came down, yeah. it would be... You would feel it. Yeah. Yeah. It would be like. Yeah. Well, well just... you know, <laughs> ma- maybe there's another podcast which. <laughs> <some point. laughs> oh my God. Yes. That would be me. I have to really be like, work on my character stuff out. You, you would because, yeah. you know, it's an hour long conversation. Yeah. You would need. <laughs> You would need many she'd layers. Need all the stories and yeah, she'd yeah. need the hero's journey. Yeah, and, and, and life luggets and that's some of the cool stuff that came out of the um, the character development stuff. That is, because yeah. I always knew that I was doing I'd been doing this character stuff, but I knew it wouldn't, the public wouldn't see it for a while. Mm. Do you, like mm. it's that kind of thing of um, you not only have to become proficient, but you have to prove to others that you are. Yeah, and um, so I'd started to build this character world for her. But it wouldn't unfold publicly. Yes. For another year or so. Cause yeah. Because it. It has to come out in the socials and her website and whatever. Uh, yeah, a little bit by a bit. Yeah, but yeah, in but the website last... it actually uses a couple of her yeah. origin stories and the things that we workshopped. Yeah. I'm like, woohoo, it's, yeah. coming, it's happening. My last, and the last two questions I asked you are, are, are my standard last two questions about looking more deeply into the world based yeah. on what you've learned and the one question. Yeah. Yeah, because the one question, obviously, those two are slightly more an introspective yeah. way to finish it's the podcast, really good, which I quite enjoy. It's a bit of a mind bend. Huh? Mm. It's good. Thank it's you nice so. doing these chats. You reflect again on all the stuff. Yeah, yeah that's thanks for having me. No, you're very welcome. <laughs> Some people do say it's almost like therapy. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of therapy, coaching, reflection, and everything mm. all mixed up in one. It's those high quality conversations. They're so good. Indeed. Although I feel like I just talked at you. But... Oh, I'll, I'll let you. Yeah. <laughs> Bonnie, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.